Okay, so here we are getting ready to start the finals of the USTA TAC Beginner Tournament of 2021. I believe of February 2021 since I, I don't... I think they might do another one later this year. But this is between Trav West or Aseric and Inaria. And they are going to be playing... Uh, six by six tack. So this is not the board they're going to be playing. They will be playing on this size board. And this is a two game match where each player has a chance to play as each color. Then as, uh, as, as things go along, if for example, each player wins a game, then it goes on to overtime blitz matches like we saw in the semifinals between Trav West or Aseric and Alpacas Creed. Now, here we are, ready to get going. Uh, they're asking me if I'm all good. I am good. You guys are ready to go. Inaria is going to be playing in the first game as white. Aseric will be playing as black. Basically, what I was saying about the Blitz matches is they will just keep playing pairs of Blitz matches until one person wins both games in a pair. But that's only if they, they tie in terms of number of games won. So if one person wins this game, next person wins the next game, then they go on to those Blitz matches. Otherwise, we're right into this. And so we did see Aseric face against Inaria two matches ago. Uh... In, in the playoffs, he lost, Aseric lost to Inaria, and here is sort of their rematch. And we're seeing a very standard opening, adjacent corners, and then we get this mirrored opening, and then suddenly the black comes over with that deviation of a capstone being dropped that cuts off that, that, that area there. Now, what I would expect Inaria to do is probably come across here with, with a flat stone at C2. Uh, what that would do is that would open up for this horizontal road threat and still maintain this. But instead, oh no, she did it again to him. In their last match, Inaria went ahead and moved the flatstone out of the way and isolated the capstone. Asrig is not letting that happen a second time. Moves the capstone over without even a piece to jump on top of. Really wants to avoid having his capstone isolated. So that was a little bit of a, that was that that was a little tricky, but it was a good way. That's that's one of the only times I think that moving a capstone without capturing with it is acceptable. Is when you're going to get that isolated, and it's so early in the game that it doesn't really have to worry about that. Uh, Asterisk making this capture here early, taking this stack, which is. You don't want to make too many captures early on normally, but this is actually kind of risk-free because he's got this capstone here. He knows he can get on top of this stack and win this stack war, so he doesn't really have to worry about that. Uh, yeah, that's... I mean, I I have no problem with that. And now we see Inaria going along for this horizontal road threat. No capstone yet from Inaria. I would not be surprised to see a capstone drop here on B3. It, it would prompt this capstone to immediately move up. Uh, perhaps she's waiting for this capstone to move here to C3 so she can place it here at D3, which would effectively isolate this capstone from this vertical threat. Now, if you caught any of that, hopefully I'm not speaking too quickly. But yeah, it's, uh, Pluto the Fierce in the chat who recently won the Blitz tournament, uh, the February Blitz tournament, uh, just last week. Uh, he's saying that it was a really fun opening, and yeah, it was. It's very interesting, very different. You don't really see that too often, trying to isolate that capstone and then moving it back over and kind of playing catch up here. And Neri had taken her time on this next move, trying to make sure she makes something good, and placing here at E1. And I like this placement because it does work towards that horizontal threat, but also vertically as well. And so that's it's really nice to be able to move in two directions at once, so you can switch things around. And that move did establish an anchor point here. 
So I would not be surprised. So we're seeing this build out also for black building at B3 is also vertical and horizontal at the same time. It builds in both directions. Again, nice to see. I would not be surprised to see white start building up here. Still no capstone from white. No capstone from white yet. And it would be tempting to drop one here and sort of block black off from going into this uh, vertical area. But uh, black does have now the momentum in this vertical threat because black has, as you can see, three pieces going in that vertical direction and four pieces in the horizontal direction. So black does have the momentum at this point, whereas white only has two pieces going in one direction in vertical. And while she does have four going horizontally, they are cut off. And so right here, I would expect black to transition, go for that vertical threat. And he does, goes placing it B4. So something is gonna have to be done from white's point of view to stop this. Now, dropping a wall here would work, dropping, it, uh, dropping a capstone would work, but it would be tough to sort of take that capstone, place it all the way here against the edge, out of your offensive area. Sure, you could probably use it offensively in a couple moves, bring it down here, maybe try to make that horizontal threat, but it's just not as strong as, it's not as offensive as you'd like to see, especially from white playing in this game. And yeah, white is gonna have a very difficult time getting an active capstone from this position. Uh, what I would suggest, so I like that placement, but I feel like dropping, making making captures here, maybe forcing a capture and then making your own capstone placement or something like that right around here might work. Um, that, that might be the way to do it. Force the capstone to capture on top of this stack and then place your own here uh, to sort of make your own vertical threat and keep that momentum or regain that momentum rather and so that's that's what i like to see right here but mm, it's, it's difficult interesting that black is going horizontally here instead of vertically i mean the momentum is there for black to go vertically here and so there is no tack threat Whereas he could have made attack threat here by placing it B5. Uh, or he could have even made attack threat by placing it C6, throwing this stack up and spreading. But instead, we're going to see this placement here at F3. And now you're going to have to do some work, figure out what she's going to do, where she's going to place that capstone. Uh, capturing over. Okay. I kind of see what the point is from that. I think Inaria might be thinking, capture over, then uh, if this captures up, drop a capstone here, or if it doesn't capture up, capture up with this and wait for that to come over and then capture. Okay, so we do see now attack threat from black coming down with E4, capturing onto E3 will be a road, as you can see from this direction. Now, one of the ways that white could do that is capturing over like that, which extends that vertical threat in the same direction, or could come up onto C3, causing the capstone to come over and then drop a capstone here at D3, which would block the capstone away from that vertical threat. Okay, so we are seeing this moving in the horizontal and vertical direction at the same time with that placement at D4. Capturing down with B4 to B3 would not be good. That would be counterproductive because this could just come back over and that would establish a, a stronger position even for black. So definitely don't want to do that. Building up at E5, not a terrible play, uh, to be honest. It would force a response from black, whether it be capturing over, capturing over here, capturing over the capstone, something would have to happen. Uh, it, it would be forcing their hand, and then afterwards, White could drop a capstone somewhere else. Instead, White dropping the capstone here. Now that's trouble, because White has to drop a wall here, 
There we go. The wall does drop. Dropping that capstone there at C4, I don't feel like that was a great spot for it because she had to know that it was going to get captured, that that stack was going to get uh, capstoned right away. So it's, it'll be interesting to see what White's plan is here. Black trying to pin White's capstone and does so effectively at this point. Right now, Black... Uh, white cannot move this capstone over and capture because black could spread that stack out up and take that at six c6 c4 c6 would make that connection vertically so this white capstone is effectively pinned until white can do something about this line down here uh, white in response could go for that vertical threat like they're doing so right here at e5 does make that threat at e6 Black's going to come over, capture. White going to come down and capture at e4. We may see a wall come out from black to capture this stack. Now, yes, yeah, so we do see the wall come out to capture. Not good. White is in trouble here. I feel like that late capstone and the not quite optimal position of that capstone was really what was uh, hurting an area in this early game. And now it's going to be really tough to fight back for that position. Because what you're looking at is black wants to capture this stack with the wall and then toss it down, spreading this out down below so that they can smash this wall and create that horizontal road threat. There would be ways for white to interrupt that threat by making some captures around here, but white would suffer for that. Currently no tack threat at the moment, but White's capstone again is pretty much pinned. So something's going to have to happen if that capstone is going to get into the game in an offensive position. White moving that whole stack over. Now that does free it from the grasp of that wall. and stop that uh, that spread. So I feel like that was probably a really good move for white. Typically not great to move an entire stack like that, but I do feel like this was a solid move. Black's gonna have to figure out a response. Does still have this wall up here gonna place. And so if a capture were to happen right there, uh, black could come down with the wall and capture black can also come down with that flat and capture or come over with the flat and capture to be honest because the the capstone and this wall neither of them can move to recapture that stack um probably best to just come down with the flat this hard capstone stack is just so strong it's in such a good spot Coming with the wall out here. Knows that she can stop this threat from developing by cutting it off at its source here with a wall movement. Doesn't have to worry about an immediate attack threat. Does make that wall placement to come over and cut that off so that that capstone can come back into the game. Wall does come over. Now this capstone is free to come over and capture this stack because it is no longer pinned. Black's trying to figure out what his next move is going to be here. I imagine he wants to retain possession of this stack, but he also wants to keep this 
capstone working well. So he does spread the stack out, doesn't make attack threat, but does increase his influence there just by getting more pieces on the board, getting more, more action out of that. I would not be surprised to see white start moving this capstone around uh, or to see white start placing to use the capstone later. We do see white coming around here out the back. This might be working for that horizontal threat, trying to sneak something in uh, later on down the road. Black building on down to this side, ready to cut off this horizontal threat of white. No tack threat yet. White did a good job of cutting off Black's offensive there because that was that was a pretty strong position. Uh, that black was in and so it was it was tough for white to be able to find a good move for that and she did and, and it worked out really well hmm. all right let's see what white does here I like a number of moves. I like placements. I like placements here at d5. Uh, I even like placements down here at, uh, at a4. I like a few of these. Uh, I think they're not too bad. Moving the capstone over is also fine. There are a number of different things that I think white can do here that can further their position and make it, make it work. Um, I like this because this also offers the opportunity to come down, smash this wall, and get a hard capstone. Um, there's there's no real threat right now from black. Black can start developing that, building up here perhaps, um, maybe come down and capture, do something around here, place it C, C1, capture up, do something like that. But black has to make a few moves in order to make it work. And I believe they're making that right now, trying to drop here at C1 so they can come up, make that connection for that vertical threat and horizontal threat. And so they're probably going to come up with C1, capture onto C2 to make that connection here and go up that direction. And also be able to come down with E4 to make that vertical th or horizontal threat as well. White is capturing over here. Doesn't make their own threat. Black can make a threat right now, though. By capturing up. But will that work in the long run is the question because this wall stack can just come down and cut that whole thing off so if he goes instead oh instead building up there not attack threat i'm interested to see what the thought process is behind that also didn't quite like that capture from capstone white capstone coming over to e4 as much I don't feel like it offers a lot of mobility, a lot of power, because I mean, this wall is here to stop this, this vertical threat. Uh, I, I mean, white could start building here at E5 and, and come over maybe, or F5 rather. Instead de decides to spread that capstone stack over to the left, cutting off that vertical threat of black. I would have liked instead maybe a a flat here first and then coming over so that capstone would have a little bit more mobility a little bit more power later on now what this is building towards is a horizontal threat from white coming across here in this sort of z type shape now dropping there at e4 is going to be the solution to stopping that threat from developing fully White is basically purely on the defensive at this point. So if we look at the flat count, even though it is fairly early on in the game and they both have plenty of reserves left, we can look at the flat count. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 from white. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 from black. Granted, black does have some 
strong plus flat move opportunities with this stack. Uh, coming down, for example, would be both attack threat and a plus flat move move uh, would probably be met with this wall coming down or this wall stack coming down, one of those two. Um, if this wall came down, I, I, that would probably be not so great for uh, for white. So I think this one would come down instead. But yeah, so there's there's a lot of opportunities for black to make up for this flat count uh, situation right now. White doing their best to try and try and build something out of this. This capstone, white capstone, is not pinned, but it's pretty close at this point. So we've got black now to move. After white played at d5, trying to make this vertical connection maybe, do something with that. Black coming down, like I mentioned before, with that horizontal threat, white's gonna have to drop one of these caps or one of these walls down to stop that threat from occurring. Or coming over and capturing here on F2. Uh, I don't like that one as much. Um I like coming down with the wall a whole lot more. That wall I don't think is the right wall to do it because black can smash this gain a very strong stack, and maintain that horizontal road threat at the same time. If black had waited to do that move, on the next turn had placed here at b5 first, that would have been very strong for black. Black instead building up here, which is interesting and I'm not quite sure why. Okay, now I am figuring it out. He's building up here so he can build at f6 on the next turn, make this connection to be a vertical threat. Okay, I see what he's doing here. Black now placing at e6, wants to make that capture over onto f6 so he can complete this vertical road. If white comes down with this wall, we're likely going to see black smash this wall and have a very strong position with that stack, but he will give up the hard capstone in order to do that. Some people in the chat asking, what is the max height of a stack? There is no max height of a stack in TAC. There is, however, a carry limit, and the carry limit is how many pieces you can pick up from a stack at any one time, and that carry limit is the length of the board. So in this case, we're playing on a 6x6 six six board, so that you can only pick up 6 pieces from a stack at any one time. This piece, this stack right now has the capstone, and then 4 flats. So this would be 5 pieces, so this whole stack can be picked up and moved around. White building up here. Not worried too much about this capture of onto F6, knows that she can bring that wall down to stop it. And when she does bring the wall down to stop it, she opens herself up for her own vertical tag threat. Nice move, thinking a couple moves ahead, that's good. Let's see what black does in response. Sees that, probably sees that same move sequence going on where white can drop that wall down after that capture at F6. Hmm, very interesting. Black taking his time here. Notice the difference in time. Inaria has six minutes on the clock. Aseric has 10 minutes on the clock. So Inaria definitely taking a lot more time from their position of vulnerability. We are seeing Black make a pretty risky move. Uh, 5c2 to the right, 2-2-1. Two, two, Very strong move. Manatee in the chat saying that's really close to Tinue. Not Tinue, but it is a very strong move.
I can see bringing this wall down would be a good move and then being able to cover up these stacks. There's no tack threat currently. No tack threat from either player, but they do have their influence spread across the board pretty well. We are seeing Black trying to develop two directions at once, but I think he's trying to focus on this vertical one. But he might be giving up on that after that capture at E6. And might be coming back to focus on this horizontal threat. No, he's coming back up top to stop that vertical threat of white and also to come back over and maybe make that capture. Trying to continue his threat from earlier. This is where white is a bit in trouble here because this stack he can capture up and he can capture with this wall and this wall moving over is a problem. The wall can capture and free these prisoners, do some work for him. But likewise, the wall from white can capture these stacks and do some work with those. Black would have to move his capstone, throw it over and then smash that stack in order to free those captives. And he would in turn lose his hard capstone, which is a very strong piece for him right now now because black is in this position he's going to have to make two moves in order to make any sort of threat here because he's got this wall capturing this piece freeing the captives white has time to capture this stack and be able to free those captives White instead dropping a wall up here. Ooh, Black making some interesting choices here. Okay, so we do see the connection here down on the vertical. So going up here, can't make any sort of road threat yet. Uh, can't make any sort of horizontal threat at the moment because we've got this wall and this flat stone blocking, but Black's position here is a lot stronger. White does come down with the wall, capturing this stack. Now, will Black let White get away with that? Nope, they will go ahead and smash that right away. Hmm. White dropping another wall here to free these prisoners. White using walls pretty liberally in this game here. That's three walls currently for white, but there have been some smashes so far. At least one smash, potentially two smashes have occurred. So that would be at least four walls. Black is definitely in the lead right now in terms of positioning. Black now trying to figure out what he can do to keep this stack from being retaken. He makes this single capture over to extend this. Not attack threat, but it is still a good position. Um, Actually, yeah, that is not attack threat. But he can he can do some work from this spot. White is definitely going to have to capture over because dropping a black here, white, and then capturing the stack would be devastating for white. It would be very difficult to come back from that. So white capturing here is good. Black can't really smash this because white would then have a lot of free reign with this stack. Black filling in. What I like is white placing here, maybe at D5. Being able to spread this stack up, kind of make for a, a threat in the vertical direction with that. And also make a very positive flat move. 
with this stack. It goes ahead and makes that move ahead of time. Now, that is not a tack threat from white. There's no tack threat from black either, but it's a much better position for white than it was a moment ago. Okay, so we do see that move coming over, this capstone moving off of that stack, getting ready to recapture this stack probably, uh, keep this vertical threat from developing. Now, what might work is taking this stack here, leaving a uh, black here and then capturing with the wall stack you could use that that uh that stack here those captives and then spread them across for more captives uh for more uh, of a flat count move and so that might be really solid at this point as well Okay, placing at C2. All right, no tack threat as of yet. It's still like that move of coming over with this uh, this wall and capturing here. It might result, it can't result in, in this capstone smashing because it would lead to a road for white. So I do think that's probably the best move at this point is coming over and capturing this with that wall. And I believe Inaria does have a flat lead, a very slight flat lead at this moment. Comes over with that wall stack. Good. That's that's the move I like to see there. That is the move I like to see. And we are seeing a flat lead from Inaria. Inaria has 11 flats on the board showing and Asterix has 10. Uh, so it is a slight advantage right now for an area in terms of flats. And I like an area's position a lot more than I did a few minutes ago. An area is really picking this up. Uh, Black's going to have to do some work in order to, to make this happen. Smashing here, definitely not the work that he wants to do because it would result in a loss for him placing here at D5. So he's got to do something to fix what's about to happen, which is this stack spreading across there to the left. Goes ahead and makes this capture. He can make some positive flat moves with that. He can capture this with his capstone and make a good um, a hard capstone. Not sure. No, he can't do that. Oh, he could. He could make it a hard cap and he wouldn't immediately lose. Ooh, white coming across this direction. Interesting, not making the, the solid flat move. Instead coming across here and threatening this stack. I don't know if I agree with that. I think that that flat move this direction would have worked out better in the long run. Uh, but we'll see how this turns out. Because no matter what, black wants to get this stack here because it's got three black pieces in a row. He wants to smash that. He wants to have control of that with his capstone so he can do some damage with it. So this capturing up here would just basically be a gift for black. Hmm. Black could decide to pin this white capstone by placing here at C3. That would make it so this white capstone couldn't jump across and smash anything. Uh, otherwise, it would lead to a loss for Black. Black is coming across with that double stack here and recapturing those two pieces, getting rid of those whites, making it a much stronger position for black and also uh, giving black a better flat count score at the moment. Hmm. 
that flat lead that uh, Anaria had a moment ago, yeah, that's gone now. Asterix now has 10 flats to Anaria's 9. And if we did see White decide to take this stack, this is 4 tall. Come over here, capture that. It would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So would have to leave one white flat on the bottom anytime moving that big stack afterwards. Instead, white deciding to go ahead and place some more. So this is now 10 flats to 10 flats. Placing up, trying to go in that vertical direction, make some threats in that way. Black, placing some more. Going to try and make this vertical threat happen for black is, is I, I'm guessing, the plan here. Uh, white not bothering, going straight for that threat. Placing here at d5 would be a win. Uh, black might not see it because this capstone, capstone blindness is a thing. People do miss threats that involve capstones all the time. Hmm. All right, what we do see also the time here. Asterisk down to six minutes, but Anaria down to two and a half minutes left on the clock. Okay, Black making, no, not making attack threat here. That is not attack threat, but it does cut off the vertical threat of white. This is a point where I do like a capture onto this stack, uh, probably with that wall stack. That's what I like here. I do like that. Uh, Black may respond by moving the capstone down onto this piece here at D2. He can do that. There's no threat of him losing. And I feel like that's a pretty strong move, threatens this stack, and keeps the stack from making such a strong positive flat move in the left direction and cutting off all of his positioning. Seems like the best move to me. Though I could be mistaken. That has happened once or twice. We do also see some strong positive flat moves with this stack and this wall here being able to come across and make a few good positive flat moves in the future. So black, black isn't in trouble when it comes to flats at this point. Also, black has fewer reserves. So at this point in the game, he has a better chance of controlling when the game ends. For those unfamiliar, the game does end when one person runs out of flats or one person makes a road or if the board is completely filled up. Uh, so if all the spaces are taken, the game ends, one person runs out, game ends, a foreign person makes a road, which is sort of the point, game ends. So this is a bit tricky for black. Um, I, I do feel like moving this stack down is going to be the move to make. Makes a lot of sense to me. But he may not be seeing that, or he may see something better that I don't see. Comes down with that stack. No tack threat there, no tack threat there. I'd say leave a white. Leave a white and drop the rest of that stack here. I like that move, but now that this stack is here, white is probably thinking, oh, maybe I should capture that. But I think that that's a bit of a bait and probably not the best idea at this point. Huh, white instead capturing over with this wall. There was no threat, so I'm not quite sure what that was about. But white can now take this stack at any point, throw it down, cover this up, and then spread back up. 
So that might that might work out in the long run, but I did like this move coming across here first. And so white might be thinking about a flat win here, an eventual flat win. Because that is three whites under. Now black's gotta make a move, but white is down to a minute 40. Asterisk taking his time at three and a half minutes to go on the clock. Again, they do get 10 seconds for every turn they take. They get 10 seconds added to their clock. This is a 10 second increment on a base 15 minute game. So they started with 15 minutes and now they're down to this. If I had this amount of time on the clock and I were playing, I would definitely be panicking right now because I'm not used to that. Okay, there we do see that capstone come down from black threatening this big stack. That's why I really wanted that to move over before to avoid that from happening, uh, to, to avoid that, keep that from happening. But this is a troublesome position. Black does make that, that wall throw down here, captures that stack, ready to throw that back up. Throwing it back up would be a tack threat. And a tough one to stop, to be honest. Uh, unless black takes that, uh, that wall stack here. Then it would be pretty easy to stop. Some risky moves going on right now. And I believe that's mainly due to time. I mean, a minute and a half for an area. Two and a half minutes for Aceric. This is a tough one. This is definitely a lot closer than their previous match. I think we can probably owe that to Asterix not letting an area isolate his capstone on the first few moves. Okay, so he does make that smash. White does make that move. Will we see Black come up here to stop it? Because this does need to be stopped. This is attack threat. Placing here or placing here would be attack threat for white. Would be a road for white, rather. It is attack threat now. So if black decides to take all of these and sort of spread it out above, that would stop it. Or capturing here at A3 would um, temporarily stop it as well. But I think that this capstone is, stack is going to need to move up. Which he didn't want he didn't want that because he wanted the capstone stack to be used going this way, I'm sure. Uh, but now he's gonna have to use it going vertically in order to stop this threat from happening. And white's in a pretty good position right now. Despite this strong stack from black, white's white's got a strong position on the board. Uh has ta uh ca <laughs> flat gown advantage. That's what I was trying to say. I clearly can't think straight. Imagine how they're thinking right now with all of their uh, time limits on their thought process. Okay. Mm, let me look at that one more time. Yeah, I'd say that's fine. Black's going to come back down with this stack to recapture it. I'm sure. Because you leave a black, leave a black, come over. That that's what he did. Uh, white can't make any tack threat at this point that I'm aware of. Black does have this double stack, so we could recapture this pretty easily. Now black's in a lot stronger position after that move. But white's down to a minute ten. Now Asterix down to a minute fifteen. They're both sort of running pretty quick right now. We're trying to make the, the good moves. Black make, uh, white making that capture over is pretty solid because now that wall can come down. And that's pretty good. Dropping a flat here for white on F4 on the next move is really dang close to Tinue. And that's that's what you want to see uh, if, you're, if you're white. Black 
You want to notice that. You want to do something about that right now. Hmm. He's doing something about it. Okay. Not attack threat from black. White is placing that there. Black's going to go up with his stack to stop that, I'm sure. But then black, uh, white can take this stack down, throw it down here, be able to free those prisoners, and start to do some work with that from there. Uh, so now we do see Asterix down lower on time than an area, and Asterix down to 40 seconds on the clock. He does make that move to stop that from happening. I can see... Uh, an area probably getting ready to move this wall stack, dropping a white here, and then capturing this stack. Yep, that's what happened. Uh, no tack threat from either player at this point. Pretty close for black, though. Black probably wants to capture this stack, maybe drop one, drop another one black, and then drop the rest of those three here. Or maybe just end it at this point. Both players have a pretty strong spot, but Asterix down to 15 seconds. He's got to make his move quick. This this one may go to time. 10 seconds on the clock for Asterix. Oh no. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, and Asterix loses to time. Oh, that is such a shame. That is a shame. He was doing really well too. That was that was really close. Um, it's it's always a pain to see a game come down to time instead of seeing a road or a flat win or anything like that. The time win is isn't as fun nearly. But man, they were both down to the wire there on in terms of time. They both had some strong moves in the future. It was hard to say who was going to come out on top of that because there's so many different possibilities uh, for moving this stack around, moving this stack around. There's a lot they could do, uh, both players. And so, well played to both players. Uh, congratulations to Inaria on the first round one. Uh, they are going to be playing a second game in this match, at least one more. If Inaria wins the next one, then she takes the tournament, and that is it. That is all she wrote. The tournament is over, and Inaria wins the whole thing. However... This is double elimination, and an area has not lost in this uh, playoff bracket yet. And so Asterix, if he does end up winning this second game, and then winning the Blitz playoff games, the Blitz overtime games, rather, then we would see um, it go to a second match at another date, where they would play another time, and that would be the grand finals of this tournament because Inari has to lose twice. Uh, two matches. But yeah, 49 moves in that game. Pretty solid amount of turns in that game. Really fun. A lot of fun to play that one. All right, so they are ready to get going on game two. This is game two of the finals match. Inaria did win the first match, or the first game on time, and which is a shame because time, don't want to win on time. Uh, but this is a time for redemption for Asterix. He can come out and win this game. If he does win this game, it goes to Blitz overtime. Anyway, so we do see a slightly different opening from Asterix this time, not playing that center area. Instead of playing off to the side. Okay, still continuing that vertical threat. I wonder what we're going to see from black here in response. Will we see a capstone on F4 or F3? Yeah, we do see a capstone here on F4. Ready to come across. I wouldn't be surprised to see white just start playing here at D2 and come across this way, start going for that horizontal threat. Instead, he continues this vertical threat which I always found interesting when people continue that threat when they know it's going to get cut off immediately. And I'm sure I've done it a bunch of times too, but uh, it's, it seems sort of like that's the inevitable move. And when he could have placed here, 
and had that momentum of that horizontal road. Instead, black now has the momentum because black can place here and that's four pieces in a row, whereas white has three in a row. So black can get to a road, a horizontal road, much quicker than white can at this point. So by allowing, by, by placing here instead of here right away, he allowed black to have that momentum. So now black's got the momentum. White's going to have to respond to this somehow. White's going to have to make a placement because white in their current position can't make any capture that affects this road. And so dropping a wall here or a flat here, something like that. Whereas black, if white even had the momentum, black would just be able to go like this, smack, and then ruin that and sort of put that off of rhythm. And so white's in trouble here. White is in trouble. Black playing here would be good at B5. Uh, when did they get more entangled into white's road? Could play down here at B3. Got a few options. Uh, no matter what, this wall is going to come over and capture on the next turn here at B4. Playing up is better because now black can place here at C5, make that threat. Now white has to throw this wall over here to D4. That's the only move they've got to stop it, really. Otherwise, they're just going to be thrashing back and forth. So black's going to place here at B4 now, and they're probably going to place another wall at A4, I guess, to really cut that off. Uh, to which black will probably respond with B6. <laughs> and so we'll see we'll see a few walls here, I think, instead of because white didn't make that move of throwing that wall up here. So we might see another wall, which would be crazy. Three walls so early in the game within 14 turns would be just nuts. So white really starting off on the back foot here, black really pushing that momentum uh, which again was only caused by placing at e1 instead of d2 uh, back here on turn six so this was that position placing right here instead of right here white would have had the momentum if they played there but back to the game so we see c6 be played by white not a wall but trying to stop that. So white, black could play here at d6, for example, to stop that. And that, that does two things. This makes a road threat for black capturing over onto c6 with d6, does create a horizontal road, but it also creates an anchor point for black for that vertical threat that they can eventually start to build towards. And so white has to respond to that. Will they respond by capturing over onto b6? Probably. <laughs> that's, I think that's like their only move at this point. Yes, that is in fact their only move, is to capture b6 with c6. It's a tough position to be in for sure. Black now building down here at a3. Ready to make that horizontal threat yet again. What Black is doing is making these very quick threats and can place here again, all by placements, not making any captures at this point. Capturing with flats does create liability. And we do see White missed that road. Black made it right away, placing here to make that capture for that threat. White decides I'm going to make my threat, didn't see it. Black takes it. So Inaria does win. Not just the match, but the entire USTA Beginner Tack Tournament of 2021, or at least of February 2021. Congratulations, Inaria, but well played to all competitors in this whole tournament. Uh, there is a special prize for first place. And for second place, they do receive their pick of either the TAC Traveler set or the special metal capstones uh, that are also very nice. And then second place gets whatever first place doesn't pick. And then every competitor in this beginner USTA TAC tournament of the first quarter of 2021 does receive the door prize of the Mastering TAC Level 1 book by Bill Layton. 
and that is if they have managed to go to every single one of their matches. Also, a special prize for the top three finishers, that is Inaria, Aseric, and Alpacas Creed, they all graduate from the beginner classification, can no longer participate in these beginner tournaments, but they will be invited to an upcoming intermediate invitational tournament where folks who are too good for a beginner tournament but aren't quite in the top 10 players of TAC can compete. But that is all for this tournament. Congratulations again to Inaria. We have seen some fantastic games played. Come back next time for the next tournament and all the commentary that I do for those. Be sure to check out the description of this video that has all the links to all the fantastic resources that we have for this community, including the TAC Discord, which is the community hub, and that's where everybody is all the time. You can even play asynchronous games through the TAC Discord, find people to play with through that same service to play with online through playtac.com. Now, thank you all for watching, have a great day, and happy tacking.